There seems to be a lot of people trying DMT in the world, and a lot of people curious about it. I don't use DMT lately on a regular basis or anything like that, but in the past, I had a, a lot of experiences with it, and I know uh, quite a bit about the experience. And so I'm making this little video. I would discourage anybody from using it. If you're unsure, don't do it. But that said, if you're going to do it, or you're curious about what the experience is about or how to prepare for it, I'm making this video for you. So, some people who have DMT, they find it to be a waxy, yellowy waxy or powdery substance. And it has a certain smell. It's almost like grandma's attic. A lot of times people will smoke it with either, there's different ways to do it. Some people dab it. Other people will put it on top of a flower of some sort. Like I recall it being smoked by someone who wasn't me uh, on lavender flowers. So a person might put a little bit of lavender in a bowl and then put some of the DMT on top of it. And if that's the case, some people use crack pipes. I've never done that before. But if you're doing it on the flowers, the way to do it would be to light the lighter and gently gently massage the substance with the flame till it melts. And once it's melted, then just rip it real hard and make like a blowtorch with the lighter. And uh, a pea size amount is enough. One, one full puff, if you get it, most all of it, that's enough. And just hold it as long as you can. That said, within a few seconds, you get transported to a whole other experience. So, uh, it's important to prepare. Now, how does a person prepare? Well, it seems maybe a little bit mojo mojo, but it's really important that your spiritual center, you have a spiritual center before you begin because really when you get to the other place, all you have is a feeling of a feeling. So all your logical thinking, all your critical faculties, that's all, for the most part, that's generally speaking, that's out the window. What you have is uh, your basic moral compass and the sense of your environment. So if you just like get out of a car sit down in a foreign place and smoke some, it's going to be way, 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 way different than if you were in a, a place with locked doors that's familiar and everything's harmonious, gentle music with no lyrics. That's going to be way different. What I would recommend is that you do some spiritual preparation, whatever spiritual angle you appreciate, whatever it be, and pray for blessing pray for protection, and pray for safety. Sanctify the area, either with a little incense or bless some water and sprinkle it around. Pray for your uh, guides and, and guardian angels to protect you. And the reason is that if you get to the other side, uh, you know, they might be angels and they might be demons. There's no way to know. And there's no way to know that they're all one way or another way. So if you do the spiritual protections first, then when you get there, you can relax into the experience, knowing that you can say yes to the requests. Because you might get requests that are so foreign, you would have no concept. Like one time, um, this person who was at me, Smoked it, and this uh, gray globular being was below, uh, let's just call it the person me, uh, and then there was this rainbow being above me, and they wanted to shake hands through my spinal cord. <sighs> what? Where does that ever happen? There's no guidebook that talks about that. And so I was unsure. 
you know, I didn't have any frame of reference and there's nothing you need in the experience for this human life. You'll be just fine never smoking it. But if you get there and there and you have entities compelling you to do something, you don't have to do it. You know, but I'll tell you this much, if you say yes, to what they're compelling you to do, you're going to have a much more significant experience. However, if you don't have the preparations and there's some sort of weird shamanic hinterland vampires, well, then you really don't want to do what they're telling you to do, do you? So do the preparations and get in your heart center secure that you're safe. The candle's not going to burn down the house. Everybody here is is your ally. People will make sure you keep breathing. Whatever it is, get all that stuff settled. The most basic five-year-old A plus B equals C kind of thing. Get that all centered. So when you do it, if you do it, that you can just let go into the experience fully because it comes and goes quick. And if you're spinning off about paranoia or some weird confusion, you're going to miss it. It's going to come and go and you will, you won't be much better for it. But if a person smokes it, it's really peculiar because it's like you're holding your breath, holding your breath, holding your breath, holding your breath and pop, you're in another land, but you're not breathing. Should you be breathing? I don't know. Should you be breathing? Well, yeah, you should breathe. Should you get concerned that you're not breathing? How long has it been since you haven't breathed? It's hard to really know these things. So my advice to anybody doing it would be to do some yoga breathing before it, before you take a puff, like real actual yoga breathing, like <laughs> that's a quick inversion. But if you do something like that, a few times, then your breath, your body will be all oxygenated. Now, I've never heard of anybody coming to physical harm from smoking DMT, but plenty of people have come to psychic harm. Plenty of people. So you want to guard against that. But assuming you've done the protections and you've done some breathing exercises, so you have your body totally oxygenated, when you get to that pop, you end up in that spot, you can say, oh, it's all good. I'm okay. Everything's fine. Uh, what can you show me? What can you teach me? The best way I can describe the experience itself is like, is like, oh, 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 oh. And then pop. Imagine if you're in like a little Volkswagen Beetle, just a little small car, right? No driver seat, no passenger seat, no steering wheel, just like a little bubble with a, like a platform. And suddenly you're this close to somebody else who you've never met, you don't recognize this sort of rainbow creature, but they're intimately aware of you suddenly. I told one guy one time, it would be as if suddenly you were naked and some guy was right up on your dick. It's like, oh my God, uh, I wasn't quite prepared for that. It seems quite uh, wrong somehow. It seems not right. It's not, it's not sexual per se, but there's a certain amount of, um, well, in creation, it's carnal. There's a lot of carnal aspects to creation. And we have this uh, Western idea that the God realm is separate from this. God realm is all holy, shiny, God, gold, polished, elegant, effortless, happy. But if you knew the truth, and we're able to process that God includes all wickedness as well as all goodness in the totality of creation and way, way beyond creation, then when you got to places like the DMT experience, you might not be so surprised. But it seems tricky because suddenly, you know, it's not, it's not sexual, but it's very intimate in a, in a real way, not a, like a mythical sort of like bright, shiny orb. No, it's like graphic, hey, here, here is life now. And it's, uh, you know, to engage it, engaging pleasure for pleasure's sake feels 
somehow sinful to a Catholic mind. And so if you get into a place like this and you're being encouraged to engage in pleasure of an unknown context, it's it can be disconcerting. So my advice is this. Be in a safe place. Have some sort of spiritual protection that you've consciously and sincerely done. And just before you smoke, you know, do the breathing, but think to yourself, okay, I'm doing this on purpose. I am safe. The environment is safe. Everything will be okay. And if there's somebody there watching you, all the better. Just make sure that you keep breathing. If you've gone a minute without breathing, just have them touch you gently and say, breathe deeply and rhythmically. Otherwise, they shouldn't care if you're twisting sideways and, uh, you know, chanting the national anthem, whatever it is, you know, it, if you're not coming to harm or harming anyone, nothing should happen. They should not interrupt you. They should be clear about that. A lot of times what, like this one, um, I've got stories out the yin yang, but suffice it to say that the best thing you can do is do spiritual protection so that you can say yes, when the experience comes. Because if the experience comes and you feel unsure, then guess what? Bye-bye. Experience is over and you're just left feeling kind of weird. But if you're if you're prepared and you feel like you have your spiritual armor on and you're you're sincere and you're willing to learn and be open to experience, then you can engage the experience more deeply and more fully. That's that's my two cents. I hope it helps. Good luck to you. If you're in doubt, don't do it. Ain't no need. If you do it, may God be on your side and be blessed. Actually, you should be blessed anyway. And God be on your side anyway. God be on your side and be blessed. Um.